I need to ask you a question. Be curious, Drifters. Amelia's Jewel hits the front. Emma Crow is coming right away for Damien Oliver. Bella Nip and Peter and Boy, doesn't she deserve this? The Giga Kick's got a strong kick. Golden Mile, soar out the mile. I'm Thunderstruck over the top. Mr. Brightside has won the mile. And Militarise blows them away in the Champagne Stakes. And she's a class act. Pulling right away, Prowess. And Zoo got you, won it by two and a half. Zaki joined by Animo, who looks destiny in the face. How are you? You're looking, you're Gla- looking good. Glassy eyed? Yeah. Uh, With a pocket full of dreams. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm a bit, a bit indifferent about racing at the moment. Yeah. How are you feeling about it? A bit the same. A bit indifferent. Oh, mate. When Detonate Jack finally <laughs> decides to rock up and. I could tell you were so pissed off at oh, that so yesterday. I was like, oh, come on, man. Come on, give me a chance. Yeah, give me a chance. That's 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 what I think regularly. Like, where was that the last week at a distance where you far better suited? Mm. You had one of the runs of the race, bruh. Yeah. What are you doing to me? That's what I think all the time. Like, give me give me a chance. Yeah. And then I say, I'm not a victim. No. So I don't need to be given any chances. That's true. I create my own. Yeah. Um, no, yeah, feeling a bit slim today. Not too bad. Like, yeah. I find when I just drink the beers. Yep. Stay on the beers. Like the next day, I, I, I feel it, but I come fine. Yeah. Um. Were you, you were on a few gingies last night, I saw. Yeah, not too many. Not only, too many. Only had two. Yeah. Friends myth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> From me. <laughs> yeah, yesterday we had Prunna. <laughs> Friends mass. Friends miss. It was good. Yeah, it's good. I don't know. Could have could have used with a couple more dishes. I reckon. <laughs> Fucking hell! There was so much food. There was so much food. Jesus Christ! Do you know what? Um, your lovely partner Pro can cook a ham, mate. That was delish. Yeah. It, you know what? When it, it yeah, when it comes to Christmas Day, <coughs> big big Chad Townsend guy. Firstly, <laughs> secondly, big ham guy. Like, aside from the seafood, which is a given. Honestly, like, I would forego all the sides. Get get rid of all the clutter. Yeah. Get rid of all the clutter. I don't need your and one box salad. I don't need your your duck fat roasted potatoes. I don't need <laughs> I don't need any of this other dross. Just give me just a plate no, no, no. stacked with ham, and I'm happy. Nah, you've got that terribly wrong. Terribly <laughs> wrong. Because that's what makes Christmas so good. Don't get me wrong. I love all these things. Because I only have one bock a couple of times a year. And, that's and it's delicious, isn't it? Friends miss. Yeah. And Christmas Day. It's a, it's a phenomenal salad, it isn't is it? Delicious. It's delicious. Um, just the consistency. Uh, yeah, I really like it. So, yeah, look, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I feel personally attacked right now and victimised. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy these things. But I'd, I'd, what I'm saying is <laughs> if you gave me a plate just loaded with Christmas ham, I'd be a happy boy. And how good is it when you're having it the next day and you're having HCTs? Delicious. Delicious. Um, if Chad Townsend is a big guy for everything, does that mean he's a he's not a big guy at all? You know? I have been pondering that exact thought for yeah. a couple of weeks. You know? If you're if you're so big about everything, Chad, <laughs> are you actually really big on anything? I know. You, so you're just a guy then? Yeah. He's which is the perfect like definition of Chad. <laughs> He's he just a guy. He is. He could be the most quintessential Chad ever, ever yeah. to who have ever existed. Like he's the tenth best halfback in the league. <laughs> you know, I thought it was a weird signing by the Cowboys. First year he was. Really First year it was. It was. An, it was an elite signing. Falling off a cliff now. Yeah. Do you know who? Do you know where he's going to end up at some point this year or next year? You say Georgie Lawara Dragons. Oh dear. Do, do you reckon? Like he's there was top. chat about that during the year. Yeah. Well. Is he not the perfect player <laughs> for the Dragons? Is he not? I reckon he's a big St. George Illawarra. I reckon guy. he's a big South Coast of Sydney type operator. Mediocre halfback for a mediocre club. Mm. And they'll, uh, they'll pay him 850. <laughs> 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 they'll sign him for two years. They'll pay him 850. <laughs> and the reason why they sign him is because Ben Hunt leaves halfway through the year. Yep. So they're like, oh, geez, like for like replacement. Please. We are, to be honest, we don't deserve Benny Hunt. You don't. No. Hey, he tried. 
He tries his guts out, doesn't he? He tries tries his guts out, but he tried to leave. Yeah, I know. We don't yeah. deserve him, though. Yeah. We don't deserve him. Some conversations that I I saw <sighs> about that. Speaking of uh, Illawarra, the gong, mm. Long gong. Uh, the gong was on yesterday. Yep. Should we have a little... Is that a group one? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Let me have a look at the conditions of the race. Oh my God. That is a million dollar race. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's Dross. Mate, it's Dross. Right. That, the Hunter, all that bullshit, five diamonds, the invitation. Dross. Dross. <laughs> it's all Dross, mate. Just like... Money isn't the soul for everything. No. Because if there's, like, half of this field went around in the uh, five diamonds. Exactly. Oh, and it's not a good field. No. It's an okay field. It's not a great field. No. Like, detonator Jack's a group three horse. Yeah. He shouldn't be running in that's group. My, that's my point. He shouldn't be running in Group one race. He shouldn't be like, racing for a million bucks. But he shouldn't be racing for group one type prize money. No. And that's that was my exact thoughts with a few of the other races the last few weeks. Like the big dance. Yeah. A dross. Like what was the railway worth? Because that was a good race. Handicap mm. mile. Mm. Come on. Yeah. You're really off it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm big time off it. Yeah, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, drifters. I'm being a bit of a victim. Um. Yeah, like, yeah, mate. We do you know what? Oh, like, one point five million. That's pretty. That's pretty good. good. That's very good. To be honest, like I, so we have what? Not including all the pop up races, we have like seventy something group ones. Oh, too many. And then you and then you add all the pop up races, and and it's you know three figures. If you're including all that dross, um, I want to go back and listen to this and see how many times I've said dross. <laughs> it's too many. Honestly, I reckon we should have like 30. Group ones. Yeah. Half it. More than half it. And like, for example, Queensland, like we have a phenomenal carnival up here, Drifters. A phenomenal carnival. Keep. I wouldn't I wouldn't change it. You'd keep, but you'd keep like realistically if we're trimming them down. Doom in 10,000? Uh, yeah. All right. Hold on. Let me get this up, right? So the Queensland carnival we have up here... So we have the Derman 10,000 over 1,200, the Derman Cup 2,000, the Kingsford Smith over 1,300, uh, the Derby 2,400, the Queensland Oaks 2,200, uh, the Stradbroke at 1,400, the JJ Atkins and the Tattersall's Tiara. Okay. Uh, so do you, want, do you want to hear my thoughts? Yep. Derman 10,000? Yes, that's a group one. Yep. Get rid of the Kingsford Smith. Yes. Doomben Cup, yes, keep it because Doomben needs a wait for age middle distance group one. Yep, and so they're the only two at Doomben. Keep that Eagle Farm, Stradbroke, a hundred percent because it's the form race of the year. Yep, um, Derby no, Oaks no, uh, Tiara no, um, and then you make keep the, make the Q twenty two a group one because that that gives that gives Eagle Farm uh, that gives Eagle Farm a wait for age group one though. And keep the JJ because 1600 meter two year old group one is cool. And the format of that is generally speaking pretty good. You know what I'd like to see is if you want to have that middle distance group one, make the two year old race over 2000 meters at Eagle Farm. JJ. If they can get it. Bump it up too far long. <coughs> if they can get it. Um, I would love to see that. But like, yeah. So, and, and, that, and that's all Queensland has. I like the idea of the Q22 because. It's it gives Eagle Farm its weight for age and 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 there's not many races we have at weight for age more, at more than two thousand meters so it gives it something unique. Yeah. Um, the form out of it, well, without a fight, has been obviously the star, but like that's the last race New Marion's won, and I think Quetta was the first winner. Yeah, and he's he's won two Dooman Cups now. I yeah. Think. But but the thing is, if you make it a Group One, one Dooman Cup. I don't know. He's one too. You you make it you make it a group one and you and you do something with the prize money and you know build it and they will come as they say. Mm. Well, that's what I think. So and and then South Australia, 
No group ones. Dub oh, Zaki won the first one. Um, South Australia, no group ones. WA, you could argue that they don't have any. Uh, and then obviously New South Wales and Victoria, you just you just go through and you just trim it, cut the fat. Yeah, I guess. There's long tails to our group one races. And what I really like the idea of is having these big group one meetings, just like where everything's stacked into it. I love Golden Slipper Day. Yeah, love it. Uh, you know, love Derby the championships, day. Derby Day. <laughs> Every couple of years. <laughs> Every second year. But like if Adelaide were to put in, right, and they just like condense down their races because they predominantly have sprints down there. But, like, if they were to put all their Group 1 races on one day, just to have Super Saturday, instead of dragging it out for, like, a month, that would be... I would, I would get around that. That would be great. I reckon if if uh, WA could do the same thing. The issue is, is the Northerlies over, what, 1,800 or 2,000? 1,800. But then you have half of the railway field that, you know, are gonna not even going to be a, a threat in it that might be looking for further, then they can just go straight to the Northerly change up the preparations, just have the big meetings on one day. And I'd like that in Brisbane as well for the two tracks. Yep. I think that makes a bit of sense. Well, that's the thing. So you have you have Doombin Cup Day, which also has the Doombin 10,000. So you, you have the two group ones in Doombin yeah. on the same day. And then, you know, three weeks later, you have Stradbroke Day, which has the Q22, yeah. Stradbroke and the JJ. Because I think that's where the lead-up weeks are so interesting as well. It's mm. like, all right, I know this horse is going to be targeted to this day and this race. Grand final day. Yeah. Um, mate, that's a really good point. And, and yeah, that might make some of the fields a bit smaller because some horses that would traditionally go to both go to one or the other. But you made the point throughout the spring. Sometimes a small field's phenomenal if it's packed with quality. Absolutely. Eight horses who yeah. all deserve to be there. And you might have... You know, you might have, you know, a couple of shorties and then and then things are sort of close to the ten dollar mark and then you have the one or two at a big price. And that's that, and that's a good that's a good betting field. It's what the Cox play what makes the Cox play so good. Yeah. And it's only a relatively new thing <coughs> that they've done. Twelve the, horses, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Post Winks era. Is like, all right, twelve there's twelve slots, but we won't even give out the twelve slots if it's not if it's not uh warranted. I think they did that a couple of years ago. Yep only 11 runners um and that way every single horse should get their chance because there's less speed bumps how many times have we seen the thing that should have won and there's a thing at 151 just like getting in its way it's like what are you doing there yeah, get exactly. out of it exactly um no you're, you're exactly right such a good point like i actually think that's a good assignment for us to have and we can either do it before finishing up uh, this season, or bring it bring it in for the start of next season. We come with our. This is my. This is what I'd have as the Group One. Yep. Calendar, for so, example. So you know, say we have, you know, we have forty. We have it around yep. there. Forty Group Ones. What would they be? Yeah. And what would the? I might have thirty five. You might have forty five. But yep. you know, I think this one should be a Group One. Yep. No, I don't think so. This is why. Blah blah blah. Yep. This is when I'd run it. All right. Do, yeah. Homework. Homework. Give, giving each other an assignment. I reckon, I'd actually would thoroughly enjoy doing that. Though. Yeah. And um, and you could probably, you know, like for example, we'd make the Everest a group one. Yeah. So yeah, realistically, there's some races that aren't a group one, which would give group one designation to, which yeah, might mean it's closer to 40, 45 as yeah. opposed to 30, 35. But um, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, and there'd be like a justification of like, you know, we basically just go through each one. We have prior form. Yeah. We have prior form. So, for example, trying to justify that the Everest is a group one, it's like, well, yeah, it's the it's the consistently the world's highest rating sprint race. So, yeah. I think, what, this year in the champion sprint, that was, I think, the first year where the Everest winner hasn't, the winner hasn't come through the Everest since the Everest has started. Yep. Red Zell went, won the Everest, won the champions. Uh, Santa, maybe, came out and won it, maybe. Yep. Biv. Bivouac. Um, uh, Nature Strips won Nature it. Nature Strips won it a couple of times. Yeah. Santa, Santa did win that race. I think so. 
Yeah. Maybe that was before the Everest. Anyway. Anyway. He was a good horse. He was very good, Santana Lion. Very good horse. Could run on a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know who can run on a bit? It's our big detonator. <laughs> run the race sort of stuff. So after having some consultation with the source on uh, Saturday morning, uh, you know, Kembler came up as a heavy eight. So half of his on-top selections had been scratched. And uh, that made him and myself even more confident that Ossipanko was a terrible bet in this race. He was a terrible bet in this race. Couldn't, didn't understand it. No. Six weeks in between runs, uh, has z- he has zero chance on a wet track. The reason why he runs into third is c- because he's far better than all of these. Yes. All of them. And look at this, right? Over the mile, that is communist, worst part of the ground, mm-hmm. part of the track, but he beats him by about 10 lengths. Yeah. Makes me think back to that round with Guineas. My God, he was just a bet to nothing that day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he really was. He really was. Uh, but... Tell you what, Detonator Jack has absolutely brained him there. Run of the race was obviously Detonator Jack. Like he had the perfect run, but the horse you want to take out of it for me, and you know what is his ceiling? Probably around something like this is Lock Eagle. Three wide, no cover. Looked absolutely done. Ospanko should have absolutely brained him into second, but he kicks back on the worst part of the track after having the most horrid run. He's not a bad horse. Eleven dollars into five fifty. Got pumped in. Absolutely smashed in. But my Eustace, mate, they just keep bloody popping up and full credit to them. Mm. Would you rather have a horse with them or Chris Waller? We have a horse with Chris Waller. Uh well Chris Waller's been outstanding. Yeah. I don't know how my Eustace is. It's just like all right, so counter is that like middle distance staying type of operator, you know? Yeah. Showing some talent. He's showing when he has the mind or the job, <laughs> when he's next to a rail. <laughs> yeah. And he has aggressive Tyler Schiller on board. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. Great. Um, I don't know. Gut feel, you know, yeah. Much and muchness. My, my answer is indifferent. Yeah. I, th- I think you'd be getting a, a similar sort of product. Yeah. Uh, I think Mara News is being based down in Victoria, though. I think it's probably not easier, but I think the, the fruit is lower hanging yep. in Victoria compared to New South Wales. Yes. Yeah, no, that's. But you have the advantage of if Wallers are no good, they come up here. Yeah. You see, mate. And it's low hanging fruit up here. Perfect example of that is the tried and true Russo. Mm. Now, that horse for a preparation was winning. Every single benchmark 78 that there was there was in Sydney and Melbourne. Yeah. But then it hasn't won for about 18 months, but then it comes up here and then it's, you know, it won again yesterday. Yeah. He pillages the the winter carnival as well, Chris Waller. Yeah. Big boy Roy. Like yeah. he can't he, he can win down south. No. But he's a he's a winner up here. Yeah. Um like, like there's a lot of Noel Greenhole silks running around in Brisbane. Mate. And for good reason, because mm. <laughs> he's a big investor and, in this And Nifty Nev Morgan. Yep. A lot of those silks up here. Yeah. Heaps. Camel Passer. Camel Passer. Yep. Loves his Ks. He's a big K guy. Big. <laughs> special K guy. Kukaracha, <laughs> Kovalika, Camel Passer, Colding. So, the sources tips. Third in the first. First in the second. Zuatika. Who I forgot. <laughs> Contemporary ran third Best bet of the day uh, IPO got scratched at the gates He was lame before it even got to the track <laughs> uh, Had Burning Need who ran sixth um, Yeah, gave King of the Castle a wide berth And it absolutely brained him uh, Rise of the Masses ran fourth uh, Lock Eagle ran second uh, Dragonstone ran fourth uh, Mabel won. That, that was one of the wins of the day, Mabel. I didn't watch it. Widest one by three and a half lengths. Sheesh. Yeah. So, well found. And then Dan Star won the last. So, three winners for the source. It's good. Um, it's good. Yeah. Let's have a look at this group one, eh? 
This is a tough watch, actually. Um, <laughs> when, it, when it won, I was like, who's that? And you were like, I spoke about it on the podcast. I was like, mm, mustn't have been listening. <laughs> 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 Just pissed off. Oh. I, th- I, I thought it was Al Safina. Nah. And I was like, I was like, shit, that's a good win. Yeah. No, the writing was on the wall for Bustler. Like, it really was. Mm. Like, dress all dressed up, nowhere to go. You know what makes this even more frustrating? I told you this. <laughs> so, Drifters, you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel right now because this isn't the only video we put out each week. If there's a group one, we do a little preview and um, we give our top four in the race. Now, we have both done this throughout the season, but memorable ones have been the Caulfield Cup, uh, you know, of my top four selections, the tri- they went, ran the trifecta there, paying like 150 bucks or something. Well, it was the three favourites. But if you follow me in for this race, because Roots ran about eighth. And we weren't keen on her. No, but we had her in our numbers because she's the class man. Mm. But I had Bustler, Al Safina, and I had Dom to shoot the two. Ho- I said there was only two horses that could win this race out of the least steer. And they ran first and third. And this is the wrong race, by the way. Um, (laughs) 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 Um, uh, But, mate, the trifecta pays 750 to one. Shit. Yeah. Did I have a cent on? Nah. But Bustler wins at like eight eight or nine bucks. Uh, Great ride. Uh, because this horse is typically a get back horse, but he must have been listened to our podcast and suggesting that the the bias of the track at Ascot is typically good for those in the middle third. Well, he, I heard from the Prince on Saturday, and he was convinced Tuvalu was going to win. Yeah. So I was, yeah, by association. He I didn't know. win. No, he didn't. Jamie what, Carr said, uh, "What's just, that mean? Just wasn't on today." What does that mean? When the Prince was wrong. Oh. Uh, that's horse racing. That's what it means. I was convinced. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I um, like would 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 I have ever tipped Buster on top? Nah, because I'm yeah. just looking. I'm just looking at the horses I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and I know Tuvalu. Yeah, and I, I look. I know Alsafina. I pointed her out. Um before the summer carnival got underway, basically saying like, this is a good mare. Um, so that's probably the only one yeah. that, from there that I would have tipped. Yeah. And I, I thought she was a winning chance. Um, but I wouldn't, I'd, see, I, the f- results like this, I'm not frustrated because would I have ever tipped it? No, not in a million years. Mm. But it was a good win. It was. It was a good win. I was a little bit frustrated. Um, look at Big Dom coming home too. Yeah, big condom. <laughs> it's a good run uh, heading towards the Northerly. Now, if that horse wins a group one, I'd be shocked. That's my point. I know, I know. Because it's come over come over east. It's been no good. It's been dross. It's been dross, dross, dross. And like, does, does Bustler win any group ones over here? Well, it's weighted out at Way for Asia, no? It's won its group one handicap. That's what I mean. Doesn't need to though. No, it doesn't need to. But one eight hundred k. Oh shit! Eight hundred uh, for. That's a lot of money. Parnums. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Neville, long bottom parmel, Parnum. Uh, Chicken Parmigiana was the trainer, and then Stevie was the uh, jock. So nice little father son moment there. That's phenomenal. Yeah, Pikey was a weak gutter dog to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to say. Weak gutter dog. Yeah. That's my, one of my favourite things to say. Uh, now, what was this filly's name again? Super Smink. Mm. Did you watch this race? No. <laughs> so she gets a position uh, there. So that's her three wide, but she's following home about a, I don't know, 500 to one shot. Uh, but the winner is leading here in the uh, yellow. So, I think we've kind of nailed the pattern. Mm. But she actually runs third here. Wide run, yes, but a shade disappointing because this horse here in the Navy, 
uh, runs straight past her. Because right here, you're like, oh. Yeah, she's just going to breathe. She's just going to win. But then this thing winds up like bloody Buenos Noches. And old mate at the front just had the PR. Perfect run. Yeah. Now, comparing times is the only time comparison that I've done for all the meetings. But um, they would have lost by about nine lengths. The guineas. To the railway. railway. Mm. So I think the railway was pretty true, truly run race. That's where, you know, those back markers kind of, kind of came into it, you know? Yeah. Run truly enough. Yeah. And you, something we don't usually see that often is the first race being uh, abandoned there. Yeah. It was hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hot. Hot day over in Perth. Hot week. <coughs> yeah. Crazy weather we're having. Yeah, very wet in Brisbane. Pretty hot today, though. Mm. Yeah. Well said, man. Yeah. So what's the rest of Sunday got in store for you? Uh, family gathering. <coughs> Pre-Christmas family gathering with uh, cousins and whatnot. Chicken wings. Is that what you have them as no, a cuisine? Not today. We, uh, we had wings on Thursday night as a family. Roast? No, it's a, it's a picnic. A picnic? Yeah, so we're going to New Farm Park. Uh Mm. Look, I'm not sure what the cuisine's going to be. I'm I'm thinking sandwiches. Yeah, sangers. Maybe some maybe some hot chook, some hot chook, um, hot chook gravy sangers, rolls. Yeah, maybe I'm sure I'm assuming some packets of chips will be in the vicinity. Mm. Uh, maybe a footy, frisbee. Potentially, I've got one. Yeah, I'll bring it. Yeah. When I'm feeling fragile, there's nothing better than hot chips and gravy for me. Yeah. When I'm feeling fragile, that's involved because I'm seeing the colonel. I've got a meeting with the colonel and um, it's it's fried chicken and it's hot chips and gravy. It's I love fried chicken. So do I. So much. So do I. <laughs> so do I. I love the colonel. I have to, every time, you know... G will attest to this. Every time we drive past a K-Fry, doesn't matter where it is. Doesn't matter what time of day it is. <laughs> I just have to salute. <laughs> Every time, G's just like, you're such a dickhead. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. I'm the biggest dickhead I know. Yeah. I, I'm the dickhead, am I? <laughs> yeah. What? I'm the dickhead for saluting <laughs> the colonel. Because I'm so thankful that K-Fry exists. Yeah. Like, how good is it? How good are Wicked Wings? Oh, I indulge midweek. Yeah, unlike, unusual for you. Unlike me, but when they're a dollar each, you have to, don't you? I think so. How many How many did you buy? The max. And then I just had it over a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as a young man at work, um, young man, you know, still finding his way in life. And you know, learning learning the tricks of the trade, Grand Fortress. So. Um, <laughs> and and he he walked into the office. I think I believe it was on a Tuesday, uh, with with a zinger box for lunch. That is, and a, had it in front of everyone. That is a huge day in the office. And I was like, "Excuse me, <laughs> I was like, do you really think you're going to be doing much after this?" He said, "I have the ability to eat something like this and just get straight back into my work." It doesn't affect me. Yeah, right. I said, well, that'll change young whippersnapper. Yep. Um, like I'm a, I'm a, typically speaking, I'm a, I'm a salad or a white guy sushi type yeah. operator. Yeah. Big white guy sushi. Mate. The operator. best. The best. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm not, I'm not, I ain't fucking around with raw fish. Nah. Give me chicken and avocado. Mate, not from a hole in the wall. You're not getting. <laughs> no. you're not getting I'm not getting. I'm not getting kingfish sashimi no. from a hole in the wall. No, <laughs> no way. I, absolutely not. You get in the chicken katsu, exactly, and avocado. And give me, give me as many as those like little soy sauce fishes that I can yeah. pick up in I, one handful. I want to. I want to <laughs> fucking drown this white guy sushi in soy sauce. <laughs> because like, if it's a hole in the wall, I ain't trusting the flavour. But do you know what you can trust? The flavour of soy sauce. Because those little fishes of soy sauce are universal. And they're delish. Delicious. Um, Packed with sodium. 
So much sodium. So much. I wonder if Chad Townsend's a white guy sushi operator. Or do you reckon, he, do you reckon he'd indulge in, in some raw fish? Mate. He probably both because he's a big everything guy. No, you know, all right. I know something a little bit about his cuisines other than that one video, right? Okay. So what do you think is Chad Townsend's typical breakfast? Oh, <coughs> I'd say he's a bacon and eggs type operator. Very close. So he's had like the same breakfast for like ever. Yeah. I'm fascinated by Chad Townsend. Toast. Yeah. Avo. Yeah. Egg. Yeah. And that's it. Like he just has that over and over and over and over and over again on his vlogs. Interesting. It's a good it's a good breakfast. It's just a bit bland. And it kind of suits Chad's personality. You know what I mean? I'm fascinated by the blandness of Chad Townsend. Fascinated by it. How could you possibly be such a Chad? He is a Chad. Do you reckon he? do you reckon his destiny was fulfilled the day he was named by his parents? <laughs> like the, the day that his parents decided to name him Chad. Yeah. I reckon he's always had that hairline too. He came out of the hairline. <laughs> he literally he came out of the womb and had no other hair except for just a strip across his forehead. Yeah, is that a headgear on him? <laughs> oh, no, it's just his uh, strong hairline. Is that a microphone? <laughs> <laughs> Looking like uh, Nick Quinn with that hairline. Nick Quinn. Nick, Nick Quinn, Quinn has a microphone head. He does. He does. He's yeah. a strong hairline. Oh, yeah. The strongest I've seen. Do you know who I was very impressed with last night? Matthew Dolan. Of course you were. He, he looked phenomenal. Did he undo another button before, no. after I left? Oh No, that was the, the plug was pulled on that. Um, it's a shame. He, he suits the moustache. I might add. Well, I can't really get a proper grasp for it because there's so much other hair. <laughs> there's there. so much going on, like, isn't there? It's a bit darker, but I can't really... I think... Oh, it's giving me Travis head vibes. Yeah, oh, yes, mate. And Tra- Tra- Trav and Dolab, two of the most masculine alpha males I've ever come across. And back in the day, mate, doesn't matter what grade you get them in, that man scored a double two in a two-day comp for second grade. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Double ton's good. And he will let you know about it too. Yeah. He also took an absolute ripping catch in a T20 grand final first grade. Yes. And there's, fo- there's actual footage of it. Yeah, he'll, br- he'll bring it up too. He'll bring it up too. Yeah, you got it. You know, that's 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 the equivalent. The equivalent of that is me going on about picking a stack of winners on Cox Plate Day, mm. because I've got I've got to bring that up. Yeah, to satiate, you know, the fact that I can pick winners because I haven't for a long time. I know it's been about a month. Yeah. So you know, I've I've got to satisfy it, satisfy it somehow, and by bringing up the past is that is how we do it. Yep. Um. So you might be wondering, dear listener. What are these guys talking about? <laughs> and that is the extent of these review podcasts at the moment. Yeah. So your takeaways are this. The railway stakes was run nine lengths quicker than the WA Guineas. Alpha San, Alpha, Alsafina. Alsafina. Ran extremely well. Bustler was the, the bolter. Dom to shoot was fantastic heading towards Northerly. I think um, as well, you made a point on the week pod, the podcast during the week um, that you prefer to look at the local form for these races, and that's yeah. not true. Yeah, unless it's like I don't know the sprint might be a bit different story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Said overpasses heading there. He'll start two dollar favorite. Yeah, I'm happy. I just his his prep gave me the ick. Mm. Like, I'll, I'll back him because the only horse yeah. I know. Shoot me. Yeah. Dom to shoot me. <laughs> Condom to shoot me. You, you, uh, got a, you got an issue, get in the DMs and yeah. eat some crayons. <laughs> blue. Color blue. That <laughs> that's was funny. That's funny. That, that was very funny. That's very funny. Um, all right. So we'll be back Wednesday previewing the, what's the sprint called? Winter bottom. We'll be previewing that. Mm-hmm. No special K this year, which is a shame. That is, that is a shame. Um, no Paul Ailey. Yes. I was Villana very, could probably go there, to be honest. Yeah. I was very pleased with myself. Yeah, I know. Very pleased with myself. Um, 
But yeah, I reckon we try and to like keep our interest involved. We try and have a bit more of those like bigger conversations, you know, about the industry and stuff. Yeah. And then with like a quick preview and review here and there. Sounds good. So that's what the next couple of weeks will be all involved, Drifters. So we'll see you then. See you, Drifters.